Hi folks, my name is Rich Bassini here. I'm just talking today about credit. That's the topic for today. And I just want to go over a few things with you and share a few shows that I picked up off of uh, the PBS network, uh, Frontline. And the first one I want to show you is the secret history of the credit card. Um, the reason why I want to just show you captions of it, I'm not going to show you, I'm just going to show you the beginning, the intro for it. And then the rest is up to you if you'd like to watch it. Um, I have a couple over there. The, the other one is the, uh, the card game. And the other one is the retirement gamble. And can you afford to retire? These are the four uh, shows I picked off of PBS. And I thought they might be of help to you. A lot of people don't realize. But credit has a lot to do with how we... Uh, you know, spend, get loans, and uh, it's very important when you have, and then when you go pull your credit reports um, and you see negative reports on, you know, negative uh, comments on there, uh, credit inquiries, and the reason why I'm making this video is to share with you that I've had been, I've been in that situation uh, due to a job loss, a company going bankrupt, and now another job loss. And I think it's very important that uh, people stay on top of their credit. Um, they don't realize it, but it, it plays a very important role in our life. And for some people that are not too familiar with it or how the system works, I went through, I did the research on these shows, and I found it to be very interesting and informative. And um, when I get, to, I'll give you the links at the end of it. I suggest that you check it out and see for yourself. They're roughly close to about an hour long for each movie, but I learned so much from them, and um, I think you will too. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go show you just the coming attractions on the secret history of the credit card. Just give you a little preview of what what it's all about. Then I'm going to can't you know I'm going to stop it, and then I'm going to show you the other ones, and then I want to get a little more. Uh, a little more detail in talking about the negatives and the uh, you know, credit inquiries, hard inquiries, soft inquiries. I want to talk a little about that as well. So here it is from the Secret History of Credit Cards. Uh, check it out. Thank you. With major funding from the John D. E. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, helping to build a more just world, and additional funding from the Park Foundation, committed to raising public awareness. With additional funding for this program from the Nathan Cummings Foundation. Tonight on Frontline, the average American family has eight zero percent for life on transfer balances. Credit cards, plastic money, have become both a necessity and a ticket to a better life. Hawaii! A credit card is an extraordinary, unbelievably great convenience for the consumer. But the credit card industry plays by its own rules. I don't know any merchant in America who can change the price after you've bought the item, except a credit card company. Credit card banks earn record profits. MB&A's profits last year, one and a half times that of McDonald's. Well, McDonald's did do it well last year. But the profits come at a price. Now they've raised my rate to 19.98, and I have not been late ever. There are irritated, unhappy, dissatisfied customers in this industry. They are the new loan sharks in America. I certainly didn't imagine that someday we might have ended up creating a Frankenstein. Frankenstein? What do you mean, Frankenstein? Tonight, in this 2004 report, frontline correspondent Lowell Bergman and the New York Times investigate the secrets of your credit card. Okay, folks, I'm going to pause it there. Um, I think you've seen enough of the introduction on this here. And if you really are curious about credit and the credit, how the credit card industry works, you really might want to check this one out. Um, this is one of the ones I found very informative. Um, the other one I want to show you, I want to point to, is the card game. And i got to go up on my screen here, and let me just see. 
Okay, here we go, the card game. Again, I kind of like took out the coming attractions for the, you know, the advertisements in the front. So check out this one as well. I'm going to play this. And um, like I said, we'll talk more about it afterwards. Tonight on Frontline, for 30 years, Americans have played a game with the backs. With the banks holding all the cards. Changing the terms, raising interest rates, changing the rules of the game. Consumers use plastic for 100,000 transactions a minute. It has produced billions in profits and nearly a trillion dollars in debt. Americans simply cannot pay back the level of debt that has grown over the last 30 years. And the credit card industry even played a hand in the economic meltdown. We had consumers refinancing their homes to pay off all their credit cards. Apply now. And then they went back out and built their credit cards back up. Now, as credit card losses are piling up, the government is stepping in. We need to fix the rules, make them tougher, with a simple, clear, single mission to protect consumers. Why hasn't there been credit card legislation to control some of these abusive practices? Why did it take a near depression? Lobbying power. Tonight on Frontline, correspondent Lowell Bergman and the New York Times investigate the battle over the card game. Okay. That's the card game. The other ones I want to bring to your attention and hopefully it will help you out after you watch these videos or give you insight is the retirement gamble and I'm gonna get that one let's see hold on bear with me for one second here here we well I think that's right over here I think this is it. yeah the retirement gamble this was uh, pretty interesting actually they're all interesting but this was pretty interesting too I'm just giving you the previews of what what the uh, show entails and uh, you decide for yourself if you want to take the initiative to watch them. I would suggest a lot of people watch you see because they really are informative. And if you're a person and that's, that's not too familiar with uh, handling money or investments, this might be the way to go. Uh, I would take notes and uh, write stuff down if you're unsure. And uh, you could even comment on these things with the uh, publication and frontline, I should say, as well. Um, here we go. Increasingly, Americans in money trouble in this bad economy are borrowing from... And the number of workers borrowing from their accounts has reached a 10-year okay. record high. number of workers now raiding their... Let's begin with one simple fact. America is facing a retirement crisis. And the statistics are grim. Half of all Americans say they can't afford to save for retirement. The average retirement fund has lost $12,000. One third have next to no retirement savings at all. Hitting the need for many Americans to work longer and save more for retirement. I just don't know if they'll be able to save that much. God willing, Social Security will still be there for someone like me, it would probably be enough to keep me out of poverty. Gets sliced and diced and divvied up for Wall Street to play with. Now I'm just going to have to somehow find a way to save 10% of my salary or 15% of my salary, which is probably what I, what I need to actually be saving to have any shot of retiring, um, you know, not on food stamps. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hope. <laughs> hope to be able to retire. Folks, this what's going on in this country with retirement, credit card debt, the economy, there's so much stuff going on that people really need to take hold of their finances. If you watch this one here, can you afford to retire? It really, I'm not saying this to be funny, but it's, it's depressing when you really think about it. Um, for people even making middle income salary, it, it's really it's really sad, you know, if you can't save money. But again, I really suggest people take key to this here, watch it, take notes, replay it again if you have to, 
and, and take it from there, okay? But the next one I want to show you is the retirement. I think this one here is the retirement gamble. The next one I'm going to show you is can you afford to retire? Now, let's see what this one is here. Okay, here we go. Check this one out. This is a story we could tell anywhere in America, but we'll begin here in Lincoln, Nebraska. This top sheet says disclaimer and objectives. It's Monday morning. People in their 50s are getting the word on how to prepare for retirement. The number one goal that is listed there says to provide you with general information on retirement planning and your pension plan benefits. That's why These people have 401k type plans and they're in for a wake up call. I have some bad news for everyone in the room. Americans are not saving enough money for retirement. There's a lot of people that are my age that are really going to have a very nasty surprise in about the next 10 years. When I saw how much money I was going to need to maintain my standard of living after I retired, that was quite an epiphany for me that day. The sheet underneath for many Americans, it used to be that your employer took care of your retirement. What we're trying to say is a lot of the decisions that you're going to have to make are decisions that only you can make. But now the tables have turned. Corporations have stepped back and put the responsibility and much of the cost on individuals. Our pension system has changed dramatically. People aren't going to have pensions like they used to, where you get a benefit for the rest of your life. People are going to retire basically with 401k plans, and that's all. The boomer generation is finding itself long on life expectancy and short on income. How many of you have seen somebody retirement age working at McDonald's or Burger King? Now, do you think that their retirement goals are to supersize fries. They're there because they have to, aren't they? I think this is a crisis in the making. I think 10 or 15 years from now, people who approach their early 60s are simply not going to have enough money to retire. Now, folks, if this hasn't caught your attention or make you get a little nervous, I don't know what will. Because I'll be honest with you, I've watched these here a couple of times, all four of them. And it really opened my eyes up. Uh, just to give you a little, you know, introduction about myself. Um, when I got laid off my of the, my first job, I did. I was impacted with credit card debt, a lot of credit card debt, and it took me a number of years to get out of credit card debt. I closed a lot of accounts. Um, I worked with the banks, you know, letting them know my situation. It took years, but I'm very happy to say I'm down to one little credit card, and that's all I'm going to keep. Um, the thing that's scary is, well, what really hurts in all of that, I had to make a settlement with uh, a commercial bank. I'm not going to mention the name. They were nice to settle with me. But as anybody knows, when you settle for less than the full amount that you owe, it goes, at, it goes in as income. And they notify the IRS, and with that in turn, it boosts up your income, and you got to pay taxes on it. Let alone that negative uh, remark or that negative mark stays on your credit report for seven years. So for seven years, your report is tarnished. Your FICO score drops, I believe, by 35 percent, if I'm not mistaken. It drops it down. You could check the figures out. You could do your own research on it. But it really did hurt. It really impacted me. Um, credit inquiries. I would not suggest to just jump out, especially in today's market, and be too eager to jump into car loans. If you're going to buy houses or looking for co-ops or whatever, you might want to think twice about that. You know, Because like I said, we're not in the greatest times. Uh, Consumer confidence level is not really as high as expected, like the, like the news media tells you. But you might want to really think twice about it. I don't want to take too much of your time because I know, you know, sometimes videos could be long, drawn, and boring. But I just wanted to go over a few things with you. Um, and I'm going to post some stuff up there at the end of the uh, video. 
But over here, it says over here, I printed this off from creditcard.credit.com. And one of the things that says is how long does negative stay info stay on my credit report? And it says if you ever had negative information show up on your credit report, you're probably wondering how much longer will it stay there and the effect your credit score. The information you have have a negative impact on your score includes hard inquiries, accounts that have gone to collection, bankruptcies, tax liens, and judgments. To start with, inquiries made on in your credit report for two years. These are credit inquiries for two years, 24 months. The good news is that they can only impact your credit score for the first for the first 12 months. Okay, that's that. But if you have bankruptcies, that's even worse. I mean, it's the same thing as a negative. I believe it stays under for seven years as well. Um, over here, credit accounts, negative accounts. Negative account information remains on a credit report for seven years from the date it was reported. Okay, uh, as late. Um, if the account containing negative information has been closed, the entire account will be removed after seven years. I had a situation like that with a negative. My negative is going to come off from the commercial bank uh, this October 2016, and I'll be so happy when it does because. Believe it or not, that is what's ruining my FICO score. I was pushing up to close to 100, I mean, 800. And because of that, there, it really messed me up. I mean, it really dropped me down. I dropped my scores down big time. Thank God I didn't have to apply for any bankruptcies. Okay. But the, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is I don't want to get too involved with this here, you know, too much into it, is the um, people I've written. This is from Credit Karma. And people are asking about the impacts of uh, credit inquiries. And it says, um, you know, how long they last. A credit inquiry will last again for two years on your report. So uh, I'll give you an example. I went to a dealership just to look at a car. And before I knew it, the guy was getting me already all signed up, wanted to set me up with a new car payment, you know, a new car loan and everything. And at the last minute, I decided that's not what I wanted to do. Within that short period of time, he put in three credit inquiries. Okay. Um, now, people say, well, you signed for it, so you knew it was going to happen. I didn't know they were going to go through three of them. And at the last minute, I decided it wasn't for me. I didn't want to jack up any bills anymore, you know, wreck my credit anymore, uh, let alone I paid my car off. So, you know, that was another reason why I said to myself, that's why I can't say I said, I just paid my car off a little while you know, prior. Why would I want to go into a car dealership and buy a brand new car and start all over again? So anyway, if you do any credit inquiries, that's what's going to happen. It's going to stay on your, it's going to stay on it. And it drops your, it drops the FICO, uh, well, your FICO score, I think, if I'm not mistaken, by... 20 points or 25 points, something like that. I know it's along that line. You have to do your research on it. But I'm only sharing this information because the shows I've watched really helped me out. Um, the Secret History of the Credit Card is pretty interesting. They're, actually, they're all interesting uh, videos, so you might want to check them out. Um, my advice to people, don't go for those credit card services that offer, you know, they'll pay off your credit cards and they'll work things out. With the, I, I tell you the truth, I tried it. It did not work. As a matter of fact, it messed my credit up even more. Because what I was told was when you sign up with those services, those credit card services that try to help you pay down your bills, I was told don't make any payments. They'll take care of it. And what they do is they build up residual income, basically. And what happens is the credit card companies now... They're getting 30 days past late, 60 days past late, and the funds they're supposed to be building up and they're supposed to settle with the credit cards. It didn't work for me, so I canceled out the service. Lo and behold, it was too late. So my suggestion, if you could do it, call up the banks, whoever you got the credit cards, tell them your situation. When I was unemployed and I got laid off my company, I called them up and told them I couldn't make the full amount, if they could work some. And a lot of banks, if you're upfront and honest with them, they will work with you. They'll drop the interest rate, and they'll even help you out with the payment, uh, payment-wise. But whatever you do, my suggestion, I wouldn't do it. But anyway, um, 
The other thing I wanted to go over is really quick is I never really checked into this. And again, I'm going to put it at the end of the video. They have this thing. I pulled it off a website. It's a credit inquiry removal letter. And what you would do is you would send this. This is if you had an unauthorized credit. And, you know, you'll see what it says over here. Um, this is just, I guess, a, a basic format. Uh, it says you'll let it go something like this. Auth an auth author regarding unauthorized credit inquiry. Dear American Express, Visa, comma, and MasterCard, car loan company, etc. I recently received on my Experian TransUnion or Equifax credit report. Report shows a credit, credit inquiry by your company that I do not recall authorizing. I understand that you are allowed to put inquiries on my, on my file, but only if I have authorized it. Please have this inquiry removed from my credit file as soon as possible. This is what you would send out to the credit card or well, to the company you went to, like, for example, the dealer. I couldn't send this out because when I signed the bottom of the paper, I, I guess I authorized them to do it. But within that short period of time, they pulled three credit inquiries that are going to be on my, my credit report for the next two years. So, you know, please be aware of what's going on. But anyway, I don't want to make this video too long. I'm just going to post some of the stuff I have over here, the letter, the links, and uh, let you decide for yourself. But folks, really, if you can, my suggestion is please check out these videos. Check out the card game, the retirement gamble, the card game, the secret history of the credit card, and can you afford to retire? It'll not only open your eyes up, but it'll really scare the hell out of you. I mean, because I tell you, it makes me nervous because when you watch these shows, and it, they're pretty much spot on when they say people don't have money to retire. It, they really are spot on. If you could do with one or two credit cards with a low uh, balance on it, you know, like a, a minimum of credit line, you'd be better off, I mean, to be safe. I only have, I'm down to the one. And I don't want any more credit cards. I mean, now the credit card companies, they see that I'm, I'm on time with everything. My, my FICO score is going up. My credit, I'm going to have a lot of things coming up my credit report this year. So it's going to even look even better. But to be honest with you, if you want to do something like I do, if you're going to get one credit card, get one that has a decent credit line on it, not 5000 10000 20000 maybe 1000 maybe 1500 the limit. Another way and another little pointer with my local credit union, that's why I bank with. I don't bank with the commercial banks, no offense to people who do. I don't despise uh, commercial banks, but if you want to build your credit score up, if you're a person that had a little problem with uh, your, your credit, you might want to try looking into a secure credit card. I have one through my local credit union. It's secured MasterCard, but it's, it's secured. And the minimum amount you could put in there is $250. Of course, it's your money. And what happens is when you use it, you pay it back. And you pay it back with interest because it becomes a revolving one. So I did that. And let me tell you, they see, because they want the companies want to see the credit, you know, the banks and the companies that loan institutions that want to see your credit, your paying history. That helps out big time. So my suggestion is if you want to build your credit up, look into a secured credit card. It's the best thing for you. Go with the small amount that you could afford, what you feel comfortable with. I think when I use mine, it's only $15 a month. It's so small. I mean, you know, if you, if you jack up a $25 or $50 bill, if you have the money readily, you could pay that off. So that's another option to go. But anyway, I just want to say thank you. And at the end of the uh, video, um, I will put the links in there and I'll give you some more additional information. I hope this helps out. And uh, if it does, please leave a comment. And really, folks, after you watch these videos, if you do watch them, please take in consideration, take hold of your financial future because after you're watching these videos, it really opens your eyes up and it really does make you think big time. A lot of people don't realize, but they are in trouble, you know, when it comes to their 401ks or, you know, whatever type of retirement investments, you really got to watch these videos and, and watch the ones with the credit cards. I felt these were the very important ones. You know, they have other stuff out there, other movies, you know, uh, shows and documentaries about this, but these are the four I picked and I wanted to share them with you. So really, please check them out. 
And again, thank you very much for stopping by. I'm sorry for the long, boring presentation, uh, but I hope this helps out. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye now. Hi, folks. Here's the credit inquiry removal letter I was referring to. Please check it out and let me know if this helps. Thank you. Bye. Hi again. Here are the links uh, for the PBS uh, shows I was talking about. Please check them out and I uh, hope this helps. Thank you. Bye. Hi. Here's the information I was talking about from credit.com in regards to how long does negative information stay on your credit report. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to put this on the website and I'll also give you a copy of the link but just to let you look at it and you could see some of the things that uh, it deals with you got the credit accounts collection accounts the public records then you keep scrolling down a little more you got some comments that people have put on there There's tons of information out there just to let you know um, if you're going to uh, look into this here. But read the comments what people have to say about this. And uh, like I said, let me know what you think. And if, uh, if it helps, I really appreciate our feedback on it. Thank you. But um, I'm just going to keep scrolling down here. And that's it. Thank you again.